guys, it's me again, and I'm very sorry for not releasing the videos I planned to in June, but they are still coming, they're just gonna be a little bit later than usual, and you'll see what I mean. For now, let's talk about something that happened the last few days, E3. And do I really need to talk about E3 by this point? No, I don't. There's been a lot of games that piqued my interest in E3 2013, and I thought of giving uh, my personal impressions or general predictions of what will be my favorite games. I'm not saying those are the best games of the show, I'm not saying that. It's really hard to predict that since I wasn't physically in E3 and played every single one of them, but it's basically just what I'm thinking from the footage I've seen from the trailers or gameplay footage, anything like that. So without further ado and me talking too much, I'm gonna show you my top 10 most anticipated games of E3. Why? Because I like you. Number 10 Okay, here's a very quick summary of E3 2013 with the conferences. Sony crushed Microsoft, the end. Yeah, we all didn't know that. But, let's be frank, guys. Sure, buying a PS4 sounds like a great idea, I'm excited for it. But what game would one buy for it when it comes out? That's an exclusive. Yeah, I'll have to be honest, Microsoft actually offered more exclusives than Sony, but there was one that caught my eye, and that's Snack. Snack is made by the team of Mark Cerny, the guy behind the PS4 design and a contributor to many of Sony's platformers. Snack looks like a game that will remind us all that the age of imagination is not over with the next generation. It looks like a beat-em-up platformer-esque game in which you turn into many different forms and has this cool Pixar vibe to it with the visual style and the voice acting quality. If Infamous isn't coming out at lunch, at least I have this game to look forward to. You look fierce! You've got less than a minute before the sun melts me back down to size. Number 9 After five years of waiting, it's nice to see Mirror's Edge come back to us. In my humble opinion, Mirror's Edge is one of the most underrated games of all time, and I cannot wait to jump on red surfaces and defy gravity all over again. No game conveys a sense of altitude as well as Mirror's Edge, and it looks like the sequel will also have improved combat this time, which was one of my minor gripes from the original. While EA's conference was mostly okay, this made it all the better, and I know the team could give us the sequel that we want. And you can say that I have <laughs> faith in them. Number 8 Beyond Two Souls is a very interesting case. After all, it comes us from the mind of both Indigo Prophecy and Heavy Rain. After all, it's the guy that gave us this. Jason! 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 Still, David Cage is such an interesting storyteller that I'm definitely lining up for his next game. Even though I have no idea why he cast both Juno and the Green Goblin, but it is definitely gonna be one interesting game and I cannot wait what David Cage has in store for us. Maybe more of this guy! I can never get that last one right! Number 7 Suda51 is one messed up individual, but no one can deny he's a genius. Maybe his games are not exactly the best rated games of all time, but it's hard to deny his artistic contribution to the medium, hailing all the way back to the days of Killer7. Killer is dead, his next game, looks like he's taking all the stuff he learned from his previous games, put in a giant gory blender, and then voila, we get that. I just love hack and slash games, and it looks like a spiritual sequel to No More Heroes of all games. While it won't be Game of the Year, I'm definitely looking forward to it. But the other reason I'm looking forward to it? Jessica Negri. Number 6 2013 was such a great year that it only started on a good note when Nintendo announced the biggest surprise, Pokemon X and Y. Why do we use letters as subtitles? Who cares? It's Pokemon! And it's finally in 3D! I have nothing against the sprite graphics, but this is perhaps the biggest graphical upgrade since Gold and Silver, surprisingly. The reason why Pokemon is rather low on my list is not because I'm not excited for it, because trust me, I am, but because the shock value waned ever since the announcement. I'm looking forward to it, but not as much, and Nintendo's presentation at E3 
overshadowed Pokemon, and most of the news about the game were okay at best. Despite the addition of the new fairy type, however, that's a cool addition. Step aside, Dragonite. Here is your new nightmare. <laughs> Number 5 Smash only at number 5? How dare you! Maybe it's because I'm more excited about other games? I just didn't see enough of it to be excited. With all due respect to Mega Man, I am more of a Sonic fan. Either way, it's Super Smash Brothers. I don't need to explain myself. I love all of the games, even Brawl, tripping and all. And we're getting two games, both a Wii U one and a 3DS one. But listen to my suggestion, Nintendo. Please, don't repeat 2008. You started the year with Brawl in March and Mario Kart in April, leaving the months afterwards empty with nothing. Like I said, NOTHING! So I hope they work hard on Smash and I don't mind waiting. I would wait for the holiday of next year as long as the game is polished and has a functional online mode. Oh, we did get some funny announcement of this. We have the Wii Fit Trainer, which I don't really understand what she's doing there. And we have this. Thank you so much, Internet. Number 4. Those two games are tied because this is pretty much the reason why people watch E3 for, to be surprised. I remember E3 of 2009 where the biggest announcement was that Final Fantasy XIII is gonna be multi-platform. Yes, that was actually the biggest announcement of that year, which is really sad. There were so many people who were watching Sony's conference this year that were shocked to see the new Kingdom Hearts 3 finally being revealed. And I'm one of them too. However, I don't think it's fair to really anticipate it yet, because we've barely seen anything of it. So that's the reason why I'm also coupling it with Final Fantasy XV, formerly known as Versa XIII, and it was in development for 7 years and was bound to become the Japanese Duke Nukem Forever. The trailer made me happy it's back in full force with all its action, and I'm really looking forward to it. Oh, and the title reveal? This is how you do it. I did not see that coming, so... Good job, Square. You made me excited over our Final Fantasy ever since... 10. Gee, that was a long time. Number 3. After all the backlash regarding Jack Bauer replacing David Hayter as Snake, it's nice to see what Phantom Pain finally looks like. The trailer opened Microsoft's press conference, and safe to say, it was amazing. Even if it looked like Red Snake Redemption, this part won me over. If, if you can do this in the game, I'm sold. I don't really need to explain myself anymore. Like with Beyond, I want to be surprised with this game as much as possible, so I don't want to read too much into it. I just hope Kojima delivers another classic in his sleeve. That's all I have to say. It's Metal Gear Solid. I don't need to say more. Number two! No one said you could touch. Oh yeah, Bayonetta 2. The sequel of one of my all-time favorite games is definitely one of my most anticipated games of next year. But I don't really care. As long as the game is polished, that's what really matters. I don't want any cases like that. Even though Hideki Kamiya is working on the wonderful 101, you can still tell the team for Platinum Games is working really hard on this. And from other reports from E3, it's shaping up to be one hell of a game. I know many people are gonna complain it's an exclusive for Nintendo, but frankly, Nintendo saved it. If it wasn't for Nintendo, I doubt we would have a Bayonetta 2 to begin with. So there's no question in my mind, I'm looking forward to Bayonetta 2 big time. And one last thing before I move on, Bayonetta for Super Smash Brothers, please. Before we get to number one, let's do a recap. No, I'm not gonna do a recap. I think those are pointless, but let me tell you about some of my honorable mentions from this E3.
I being predictable? Perhaps. But I think this game does something that I didn't expect from a Sonic game, and it's the theme of this entire video. Surprise me. Instead of going back to the whole don't fix what's broken with Sonic Generation, Sega decided to just start a whole new format with Sonic. 3D planetoids, cylinders, 2D segments, along with many different worlds to explore. The only gripe is that I've heard the story is not gonna be exactly something I'm looking forward to, with Sonic and Eggman having to work together to defeat a common foe. As you all know, this never happened before! But I digress. Truth of the matter is that I played Mario 3D World at the Best Buy event a few days ago, and safe to say, I enjoyed it, but I kinda knew what I was going into with that game. With Sonic Lost World, I have no idea where Sega's gonna go with this. We saw a few levels and they looked cool, but where else can they go? And that to me is very fascinating. Even the biggest skeptics of the franchise are thinking that this game can be the one that not only gets the wide fan reception, but also garners the critical acclaim it deserves. Don't let us down, Sonic. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I know it's not the most complex list out there, but it's a very personal one because I like different games. But you know what? I've been holding you guys off so much. I think it's time to officially reveal what I'm planning to do for the next month. So it's not going to be exactly all of June. It's going to overlap to July. But who cares? Here you go.